about a week ago I made a video where I looked at essentially the full progression of Archer in terms of what weapons you should use at watch stages in the game, in terms of armour, equipment and pets as well. I received some comments requesting the same thing but for other classes too, so that's what we're going to do today. Mage is a unique class specific to Skyblock dealing damage in the form of magical damage. Weapon abilities take intelligence, then erase mobs off the face of the earth. A mage setup is really useful in early game dungeons, very strong for slayers that are vulnerable to magical damage, absolutely essential within Kudra, and for that case across the Crimson Isles too. Honestly the list goes on and on and on. Now you do see a lot of people teleporting around making explosions with this strange blue magical sword, but I guess the real question is where exactly do you start? Well first of all we're going to take a look at the progression of weapons. Now first of all there is an NPC in the hub not too far away from a spawn called Rosetta that sells starter gear. If you click on Rosetta and take a look at the Celeste set, there is actually what I would probably consider as maybe your first mage weapon that you could possibly buy. I don't recommend it because it isn't great and to be honest at this early stages in the game I'd probably just go for a melee setup if I'm being completely honest. But what I would consider as the first real proper usable weapon as a mage in Skyblock has got to be the Dreadlord Sword. This weapon costs you as little as 7,000 coins from the auction house, or you could just do a couple of dungeon runs, very early dungeon runs, and probably drop one yourself. The main selling point of this sword is its right click ability, Dreadlord, shoot a skull that deals 1,800.5 damage, mana cost 40. It does what it says on the tin, you basically just right click and you just spam your right click ability, and it's basically just a skull that hits the enemy, and that's pretty much it. Not really anything else to say about this weapon, it's good at the start of the game for mage, and that's that. Then you have Bonzo Staff. Okay, it's the next logical kind of progression. It requires a floor 1 completion, and it's right click ability, showtime, shoots balloons that create a large explosion on impacts, dealing up to 1068 damage, mana cost 90. This Bonzo Staff can be fragged to make it give you more intelligence, and also deal slightly more damage. Not only is it great for the start of the game, um, it can also be used in other aspects of the game later on, for instance Floor 7. Funnily enough, not for damage, but for getting up to the crystals. Once again, the Bonzo Staff is quite self-explanatory, you right click and you basically just deal damage, it shoots balloons. The cheapest one on the auction house is around about 5.4 million coins, so it is substantially more expensive than the Dreadlord Sword. Alternatively, you can actually drop it from floor 1. It's got a 31,000 meter, which isn't too bad, and it has around about a 1% chance of dropping, so what's that? Just less, or just more, should I say, than 1 in 100. Now, before we move on to the next weapon, if you are planning on purchasing anything from the Hypixel store, make sure to use code NITROS, it gets yourself 5% off. Also, you should subscribe to the channel, we just hit 60k, and wouldn't it be cool if we could hit 100k before the end of next year? I mean, that's a lot to ask, but that would be crazy. So you should subscribe. Also you should join the Discord server, it's linked in the description of this video. We offer dungeon and slayer carries, so if you need carries or want to carry and make some coins, make sure to join. Next up we have the Spirit Scepter, which to be honest is a huge upgrade from the Bonzo stuff. The Spirit Scepter is gonna give us plus 180 damage and plus 300 intelligence. It can also be fragged, which gives us plus 190 damage and plus 330 intelligence. Its right click ability, Guided Bat, shoots a Guided Spirit Bat following your aim and exploding for 2220 damage, mana cost 200. It's going to cost you around about 17 to 18 million coins on the auction house, but I've got to say, it's thoroughly worth it, it really is. Requires a Catacombs Floor 4 completion. Like I said, you can buy it from the auction house, or you can obtain 3 Spirit Wings from Floor 4, and also craft it together with 6 Enchanted Lapis Blocks. I think now is a good time to mention the importance of the Ultimate Wise enchantment. If you have Ultimate Wise 5, it reduces the ability mana cost of an item by 50%, which is huge. Which means for an item like the Spirit Scepter, you would only actually basically pay 100 mana per shot rather than 200, meaning that you only spend half of the mana that you would. Of course you can buy this from the Bazaar at Ultimate Wise 5 for almost 3 million coins if you insta buy. Alternatively, you can drop Ultimate Wise books from dungeons um, and then craft them into an Ultimate Wise 5. Now, another weapon that you could potentially think about is the Glacial Scythe. A base, the Glacial Scythe gives you plus 120 damage and plus 30 intelligence. Its ability Ice Bolt shoots one Ice Bolt that deals however much damage depending on your setup, damage and shows enemies hit for 5 seconds. When hitting the ground, also creates an explosion of 3 blocks dealing, uh, dealing the same damage, a mana cost of 75. It'll set you back around about 45 million coins, 
and can be crafted with uh, three stacks of enchanted packs ice, 40 glacial fragments, 64 hunk of blue ice, and also the frozen scythe, which is basically just a glacial scythe, but a baby version that doesn't do quite as much damage. Both the frozen scythe and more to the point the glacial scythe are actually really really good in certain situations, and to be honest, probably well worth the price. Next up we have the Fire Veil Wand. Um, now this is going to give you plus 50 damage, plus 200 intelligence. Okay, the ability is Fire Veil, creates a veil of fire around you for 5 seconds, dealing however much damage depending on your setup, um, per second to mobs within. It's got a mana cost of 300 with a cooldown of 1 second, um, requiring you to have combat skill level 24. This weapon is going to cost you probably between 10 to 11 million coins. You can buy it from the auction house. Alternatively, you can drop it from um, one of the most painful bosses in the Crimson Isles, or the game for that instance, Ashfang. Um, so that's up to you. Y you can also craft it with a stick, 10 spell powder, and um, 10 luminal fiber too. Now the Fire Veil Wand itself is actually quite different to a lot of mage weapons, considering it essentially deals passive damage. You don't have to aim at anything and shoot, you essentially just right click and stand near mobs. I'm going to give a quick demonstration because just from the explanation, it doesn't actually, it's not so self explanatory, that's what I'm trying to say. So when we activate our right click ability, it essentially just deals tick damage. As you can see when we go near a mob, it's just going to essentially kill it because it's, you know, within its confines. Now, of course the Spirit Scepter is dungeonizable, and the Fire Veil Wand isn't. Both are very useful, maybe even paired together. But there's quite a big jump between those two weapons and realistically what is going to be most useful and probably the best way to spend your money next. You could dilly dally with little bits in between, but realistically I think the best next thing to go for would be a Midas Staff. Now, the Midas Staff in itself is going to give you plus 130 damage, plus 150 strength and plus 50 intelligence. Its right click ability, Molten Wave, will cast a wave of molten gold in the direction that you are facing, deals up to 86k damage, the damage figure is pretty much irrelevant, mana cost of 500, cooldown of 1 second. The green ability is basically the ability damage bonus of this item dependent on the uh, price paid for it at the dark auction. The maximum bonus of this item is 16,000 if the bid was 100 million coins or higher. So as explained we basically have a weapon whereby you can only obtain it from the dark auction, or the darker auction should I say. Now the darker auction only actually occurs when Scorpius is the mayor and unfortunately if you're trying to get one from the darker auction you've just missed it by the skin of your teeth. But not to worry, you can still buy it from the auction house. For somebody who doesn't quite really know what they're looking for, the Midas Staff can be a very daunting item to actually look for. Considering the cheapest uh, Midas Staff on the market is actually 218 million coins, which honestly, for what this is, is expensive. I would not go anywhere near a Midas Staff like this. As you can see, the price paid for this Midas Staff was 20 million, meaning that it's only getting a fifth of the actual bonus damage that it could potentially get if somebody had paid 100 million coins for it in the first place. If we just take a look and we can see there's Midas Staffs that have basically um, got a various amount of different coins paid for it. But as you can see, the cheapest one here that has actually had over 100 million coins paid for it is going for around about 310 million coins. And it's not great, it's just pretty bog standard. But it's very careful that you double check how much you, how much the actual price paid for it at the Dark Auction in the first place was. Because a lot of people will try to essentially scam you, to be completely honest, by listing something that was uh, obtained for way less for higher, hoping that you don't actually realise, meaning that its resale value is going to be way lower. However, the thing, and the interesting thing about the Midas Staff is, like I said, it's about, for a decent Midas Staff, you'll pay 350, maybe close to 400 mil. That price does fluctuate. However, this is actually the... Um, Highest damaging mage weapon in terms of one hit damage. Now, I guess the downside about the Midas Staff and the reason why it isn't the best mage weapon is number one, it's cooldown. It has a one second cooldown. So in between shots, you have to wait a second before you can actually right click again. And of course, the absurd usefulness of versatility and just general powerfulness of the Hyperion. However, the Midas Staff is a ridiculously good weapon. Um, usually paired with something like a Spirit Scepter. It's of course a dungeonizable weapon that allows you to do floors like Floor 7 relatively comfortably unless you suffer from a skill issue like myself. Of course paired with something like uh, a Spirit Scepter, considering the Midas Staff isn't fantastic for clearing, it's more kind of better just when you need to deal a lot of damage to maybe something like a mini boss. 
But once again, the Magic Staff is great against mini bosses, like I said, so that means against things like Slayers that are vulnerable to magical damage, the Magic Staff is really useful. It will also help with the Crimson Isles. Um, I'd probably say it's the first weapon where you can actually start to properly compete or do anything. Obviously, ideally, you'd have a Hyperion, but we don't all have like 2 billion coins to splash. Which, of course, brings me on to the Hyperion, the peak of mage gameplay. The Hyperion itself isn't too overwhelming. Um, I mean, it gives you plus 260 damage, plus 150 strength, plus 350 intelligence, plus 30 ferocity, deals 50% more damage um, to withers, grants plus 1 damage and 2 intelligence per catacombs level, requires a floor 7 completion. And just a clean Hyperion like that, realistically, is not great. The reason why the Hyperion is so good is because of the 3 scrolls that you can actually put on the weapon. Implosion, which implies the Implosion ability when combined with the Necron's Blade. Ability, Implosion, right click deals 31.5k damage to nearby enemies. Then we have Wither Shield, reduces damage taken by 10% for 5 seconds, also grants an Absorption Shield that gives 150% of your critical damage as health. After 5 seconds, 50% of the shield is converted into healing. And then we have Shadow Warp, uh, the ability. Shadow Warp created a special distortion 10 blocks ahead of you that sucks all enemies around it. Using this ability again within 5 seconds to detonate the warp and deal damage to the enemies near it. Each scroll when individually applied isn't anything special but when combined together it creates a bit of a monster. Now you'll notice that on all of these um, items it says applies the something ability when combined with a Necron's Blade. Um, and a Necron's Blade is essentially um, a Hyperion before it's turned into a Hyperion. Ironically, that Necron's Blade can be turned into one of four different weapons. Hyperion realistically being the best for Mage. The way that you drop these scrolls is through Floor 7. Um, when you get an S plus and you get the extra chest, you will have a chance of dropping one of these scrolls. It is a relatively low chance, at a 0.15 chance um, every time you actually do a run you can increase this chance um by by kismet feathers meaning that you can reroll the chest at the end of each run but of course those kismet feathers aren't free the way that you actually craft the necron's blade in the first place in order to craft the hyperion is through dropping a necron sandal from floor 7 which is even more rare than the than the actual uh, scrolls at around about a 0.1 chance to drop once again you can use kismet feathers to increase your chances the necron sandal can then be combined with 24 with the catalysts to get this Necron's Blade. The Necron's Blade can then be surrounded by 8 laser eyes to get yourself a Hyperion. A completely clean Hyperion with no scrolls is going to cost you around about 860 million coins, whereas a decent Hyperion is going to cost you close to 1.9 billion coins. And the reason why this is decent is because it has all three scrolls actually applied, giving it Wither Impact, which actually completely erases the cooldown altogether meaning there is no cooldown on the Hyperion's abilities which is basically why it's so good. This Hyperion has um, got everything you'd want, it's got its slots unlocked, it has perfects in there, it's got ultimate wise 5, you know, sure you could have smite 7 which isn't too expensive and you could have more tier 7 enchantments but that just shows you this isn't the best Hyperion you can possibly get. It's not even the best Hyperion before you start looking at amazing ultimate enchantments like Chimera, I mean Arguably not even better than Ultima Wise. Still 1.9 billion coins, so it's not cheap. And in terms of weapons, that's it. There's not really anything else, realistically, that's probably even worth knowing. Now, some people might say, well, how about LCM? If you don't know what LCM, left click mage. It's essentially basically specific to dungeons. In dungeons, when you're a mage, you have a mage beam, which occurs when you basically left click with your weapon rather than right click. Obviously, most mage abilities in using right click and left click is just an added extra that doesn't happen anywhere else in the game other than dungeons it's a class ability even though it is technically mage i feel like it probably need its own video so if you maybe want to see um a guide on lcm but hey, just be dungeon specific then please let me know anyway let's uh let's move on to the armor it, it, sure you could um buy this armor from rosetta i wouldn't recommend it but if I'm being honest, honestly, the best armor, really the best first proper set of armor that you can get for Mage is going to be Wise Dragon. And the Wise Dragon set is a great set to have at the start of the game. It's going to give you a decent amount of health and defense per piece. It's going to give you also a bit of intelligence. Of course, you can reforge this armor at the blacksmith to make it very wise, giving you even more intelligence. And honestly, the uh, Wise Dragon full set bonus is actually quite good. Um, 
the abilities white blood abilities have two thirds of the mana cost which is essentially just a budget ultimate wise on the armor set which is really nice so for maybe at the start of the game where you're a bit reluctant to buy ultimate wise and you think it's a bit expensive even though i would recommend it you'd probably be better off actually getting the full set i mean as you can see here i have shadow goggles which i'll go into in a minute but um I don't even know why I really have this set. Now, if we head over to the dungeon hub and we basically just go straight forward from spawn, what's this person in the shop right here? Um, you'll see there's an item here, which is the dark goggles, then you've got the shadow goggles, and you've got the wither goggles. Now, they're all basically direct upgrades from themselves. The dark goggles give you plus 25% ability damage and plus 150 intelligence. Shadow goggles give you plus 35% ability damage and plus 200 intelligence. And the Wither Goggles give you plus 45% ability damage and plus 300 intelligence. These items are great to get. And the way that you actually deal damage as a mage is of course number one with intelligence. If you don't have mana you can't deal damage and the more intelligence you have the more damage you can deal. Another way is to increase your ability damage. And that's why these helmets are so good. For example these 5 million coin Wither Goggles um, serve as the best mage helmet full stop throughout the game even to very very end game this this is better than any other helmet which is crazy of course yeah the 300 intelligence is nice but the plus 45 percent ability damage is really why it's so good so don't sleep on these items buy whatever you can afford it's worth it oh yeah the way to get wise dragon um, i did kind of forget that you can buy the frags off the bazaar or you can just simply buy the armor off the ah Alternatively, it is dragon armor, so you could do dragons to get frags or drop the armor pieces. Um, it's a long process, but you could do it. So next up, we have the Necromancer Lord set. Now, these pieces of armor can be dropped from floor 6, and um, they give you some nice health. Let's see, on the chest plate, we're going to get plus 300 health, plus 250 defense, and plus 10 intelligence. The full set bonus increases the damage of your Necromancer summon mobs by 20%, which isn't massively useful. And for that reason, I'd recommend you to get three quarters Necromancer Lord with either Shadow or with the goggles, depending on what you can afford. Now, the chest plate is the hardest one to drop from floor six, and of course, for that reason, is the most expensive. Having said that, a full set will probably cost you around about 11 to 12 mil clean, and then plus however much for the Wither or Shadow goggles. There isn't really um, anything else to say. Anyway, next up you have Storm Armor. Now, Storm Armor is a considerable step up. Each piece of armor giving you plus 250 intelligence in addition to some nice health and defense. It reduces the damage that you take from withers by 10% which of course is nice for dungeons especially floor 7. And to use this armor you're going to need a floor 7 completion. Now the storm set is definitely definitely getting cheaper. It's much cheaper than I even remember if I'm being completely honest. The full set probably is going to cost you like 26, 27 mil for the chest plate, the leggings and the boots. Once again, um, the helmet is pointless. You want with the goggles at this point. And for dungeons, you can't get any better than this set. You just upgrade and upgrade and upgrade. Something to note that on um, on mage armor, armor setups, um, necrotic is the best enchantment. Um, the way you get the necrotic reforge is the necromancer brooch, drop from dungeons, and you can play it in an anvil. However, you can apply love into a chest plate, which on face value doesn't seem great considering it doesn't give you as much intelligence. However, it does increase your ability damage by 5%, which in turn means that you deal a little bit more damage. It is just about worth it. Now, last of all, I want to talk about Aurora. Okay, now, not only is Aurora great for endgame, it's really, really good for early game too. Now, it's hard to include this twice, and that's why I've not. Um, but basically outside of dungeons this is the best armor no two ways about it the reason why this armor is so good is not only can you upgrade it through um regular to hot to burning fiery and infernal but you can put attributes on uh, these armor pieces which make it just amazing now as you can see here we have mana pool and mana regen and if I'm being completely honest, this whole setup clean with nothing else on it other than the two base attributes of Mana Pool 1, Mana Regen 1, um, for these three pieces is going to cost you at least 700 million coins, which is a huge investment, but it is honestly worth it. On each piece of armor, in addition to all the other buffs that we get, we have Mana Pool 7, Mana Regen 7, meaning that we have an extra 140 intelligence per piece, and we also have an increased Mana Regeneration by 7%. 
per piece. So that's 21% increase in a mana regeneration just from our armor, which is, I can't explain how good that is really, to be honest. Even the base Aurora pieces give you 125 mana per and a 205 health buff along with 55 defense, which honestly isn't bad. Of course, that changes depending on the piece. Upgrading that all the way to Infernal, meaning that on the leggings you get plus 517 health, plus 139 defense and plus 315 intelligence, which is massive. Of course, not only that, you have a number of, well, armor specific abilities. The funny thing is though, regardless of how good these abilities are, Wither Goggles are still better than Infernal Aurora, which is crazy. You would think that a fully maxed out Infernal Aurora helmet would be better, and I guess in some respects it probably is, but to be completely honest, the ability damage just can't be contested with. It's ridiculous. And I can talk about Aurora armor for a bit longer if you really want me to, but there's not really much point. I mean, once again, just put Wisdom on there, upgrade it as far as you can. Gemstones are important. I'm kind of trolling with my human potato books and um, also um, my gemstones. But yeah, there's not really much else to say about it. It is just the best armor outside of dungeons full stop. So next up, I just want to quickly talk about equipment. Equipment is very, very important. And one of the main reasons for this being so important is that especially at, well towards the later stages of Skyblock where you have more coins to spend, um, you can put mana pool and mana regen on these pieces of equipment too. Meaning that from each piece of equipment, I get an additional 100 intelligence and plus 5% mana regeneration, which is ridiculous. Meaning that from my armor and my equipment, I'm getting a plus 41% increase in mana regeneration, which is so important. Something that's really, really important to have as well is an implosion belt. What this does is increases all explosion damage dealt by 25%. And of course, a lot of mage weapons use explosion damage, for instance, a Hyperion, Spirit Scepter, and so on. The Golden of Contagion is also another nice one to have. The ability Contaminate, killing an enemy causes an explosion, dealing 10% of their total health as damage to all enemies within two blocks. Enemies in the blast radius will also be contaminated, causing them to explode on death. It basically just adds to the Hyperion, if I'm being completely honest, and anything that deals explosive damage anyway. But once again, of course you can put attributes on these two, which is just a huge plus. Now to finish the video off, I want to talk about pets. Now there are pets, of course, that give you an increased intelligence. Um, however, what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to streamline this because there are pets in between, but realistically these are the main ones that you want to know about. And the first thing is the legendary sheep pet. At level 100, this gives you plus 100 intelligence, plus 20% ability damage, which is massive. Mana Saver, which reduces the mana cost of abilities by 20%, which is insane. Overheal gives you a 10% shield after not taking damage for 10 seconds, which is nice. Dungeon Wizard increases your total mana by 25% while in dungeons, so that's nice. Of course, it's got outside of dungeons too, but it's also even better within. And yeah, the, the turtle shell is just a pet item that I put on there. You can put something like a textbook on there, maybe to get more intelligence if you really want to. This is a solid pet that you can use for majority of the game, realistically. Next up, we have the Ender Dragon pet. So, of course, you have an epic and a legendary. Honestly, this is a pet where within Mage, I kind of almost skipped. But anyway, if we take a look at the legendary, it's going to give us plus 50 strength at level 100, uh, plus 50% crit damage and plus 10% crit chance, which realistically none of that is very useful to us. We deal 200% more damage to end mobs, buffs the experts of the dragons, which isn't great. So realistically, the only thing that we benefit from this is an increase of 10% for most stats, um, which is not bad. Um, of course, this is going to be good for pretty much any class, realistically. I sound like a broken record, but I mean, the G-Drag is just the best pet for everything. I said it for Archer, and I'm going to say again for Mage, it just is. Um, the buffs that it gives is just ridiculous. At level 200, it's going to give us bonus attack speed, strength, and magic find, which isn't massively useful to Mage. It's going to give us strength on gold weapons, which isn't really that useful again. The main thing that we're looking at is the legendary treasure ability that makes us gain 0.2% damage for every million coins in the bank account. So with level 200 G-Drag and a billion coins in the bank, it's just insane. The damage is absolutely crazy with a G-Drag. What I will say is um, the Sheep Pet will still give you more intelligence. Just won't make you deal as much damage. And I think that should probably do it. There's not really much else that I can think in terms of relatively regular progression that you'd really need to know. Well, there we go. There we have it. The uh, full Mage Progression Guide. 
Uh, let me know what you want to see next. Anyway, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.